Uh, when we found him here, I felt wretched. Which is why I sent word asking you to come. I threw that inspector over there. Oh boy. Gregson, do you have anything to say? Sir so, Inspector, what was the victim's name? Who was he? Mr. <laughs> Mr. William Shamspear. Shamspear? He was a lodger here. Okay. As you can probably tell, he was an actor. A bit of a dead loss as it happens. Or just dead. This is no time to make jokes. Mr. Shamspear. It was the landlord, old Mr. Garadab, and the other lodger, Mr. Natsume, who found him. The fellow didn't rise at his usual hour, so Garadab got worried and kicked, out, kicked the door down. But doesn't Mr. Garadab have a bad leg? Oh yeah, you're right about there. Uh, you're right there. It was that jittery Japanese hunchback over there who actually did the kicking. Really? Soseki-san? Wait, this is not Soseki's apartment, right? This is... This is the apartment of Shamspear. Ah, uh, I see. That much... This makes much more sense. Yeah. Because Soseki's apartment doesn't look like this either. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so... So he's not being implicated, is he? Yeah, the victim was pretty hard up, it seems. Even done some time inside for petty crimes. Oh. He had no money, no place to go, and no friends. His only acquaintances were the people in this house. Miserable life and a miserable end to it. So, what exactly is Mr. Natsume still, still doing here? He's not involved in the investigation, so shouldn't you have sent him away? Well, I'm not saying it's because the fella looks odd or anything, or that he acts suspicious. But I thought it would be prudent to take a statement from the culprit. I mean, cohabitor. <laughs> Gregson. You nearly said culprit there, didn't you? Oh dear. Mr. Natsumi appears to be under suspicion again. It certainly seems that way. He does just come across as such an odd fellow, doesn't he? Poor man, how unfortunate. Anyway, I can't say much until the corona gets here. But I don't think the fella's been a goner that long. The body's still warm. Even if the inspector would allow it, I don't think I could bring myself to touch a dead body. Oh boy. I mean, he was odd, but I mean, he seemed nice, I guess. He looked like a walking meme. <laughs> you know, the smiley meme. Yeah, his face was just like that. Uh, Sholmes, what, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, Sholmes? Um, Mr. Sholmes, wh what are you doing? <sighs> you need only observe to know it, my dear fellow. Investigating, naturally. There's nothing natural about that pose. Mr. Sholmes, have you made some miraculous discovery? Patience, my dear madam, patience. We've not been here in this minim uh, in this room five minutes. So far, all I've managed to deduce is what actually happened. Oh! You don't say. My goodness, but isn't that everything we need to know, Mr. Sholmes? Now that you propose the idea, I believe one could indeed see it that way. At the present time, I have managed to draw two incontrovertible conclusions. The first, that there was a physical struggle here last night in which the victim fought for his life. A physical struggle? I don't see anything like that. Uh, Mr. Natsume, what's wrong? Is is something that Mr. Shom said significant somehow? No, 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 no! Don't, don't mind me. Forget I was here. Wait, you had an argument with the victim? Don't tell me, please. And my second conclusion is that 
There was a poison lingering in the air here last night that passed the victim's lips. No, 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 you must tell us everything, Mr. Sholmes. Spare no detail. But of course, let the theatrical tragedy before us be unraveled by my great deductions presented for your pleasure in two acts. We've heard some truly astounding great deductions from Mr. Sholmes in the past. No doubt this will be no exception. What miracles will unfold before our eyes this time? So, my dear fellows, for your delight and wonder, let the curtain rise for Herlock Holmes's logic and reasoning spectacular act one. Oh no, we haven't even finished investigating ourselves. Careful observation of the victim reveals to us the events that transpired in this disconsolate room last night. Foam at the mouth of the deceased clearly indicates the use of poison. And what is that on the plate? Like a piece of cheese? <laughs> what? No, butter. Next to the victim, we notice a large dining plate which contains, you will observe, one half of, of a sizable bar of soap. Soap? Meaningful, indubitably. Why is the soap set so purposefully upon the dish, like the victim's last supper in fact, yes. Could it be that a man was about to eat it? Of course, the fork reveals the answer. It appears that a young man's appetite was his undoing. Taking up arms in the form of his cutlery, the victim engaged in a deadly battle for his life. Yet the struggle against his hunger was in vain, for in the end he couldn't resist devouring the slippery feast. But London's foul soap is besmirched by foul poison. Yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the contents of the plate. The soap and the leather about the young man's mouth are too perfectly a match to ignore. And the cause of death was clearly intoxication due to excessive ingestion of foul soap. Though personally, I have a greater interest in the taste of foul candle wax, of course. Okay, that's a weird tidbit about you. the cause of death identified, we proceed to Act 2, where we ponder the next question. Was this suicide or murder? The audience will recall that death, death occurring during the victim's last supper. Did the man dine and die alone? The single teacup suggests the answer. To draw a conclusion on such meager evidence would be foolish, however, certainly. The careful criminal could have absconded with his own cup to cover his tracks. Well, allow me to lift a veil of doubt, my dear fellow. Indeed, what reveals the answer, of course, is the broken lock. Huh? Though forced open now at the time of the incident, this door was locked. A locked door. A locked room murder. And the soul key was in the victim's pocket. In other words, when the victim consumed the poison, he must have been alone. Alone with his inferior soap, from whence wafted an inferior scent. And with that acrid aroma lingering in the air, the victim met his end in tragic solitude. We can take comfort only in the fact that his soul was well cleansed on its way to the hereafter. Okay, he's not blaming Natsume. Thus concludes the final act of Herlock Holmes' great deduction.
<laughs> this is the sun. I love her. How she just calmly corrects Sholmes. There's just one thing, Mr. Sholmes. Oh, this time it's me. You're disposed to identifying just one thing, aren't you, Mr. Naruto? Pray, what concerns you? Well, no matter how hungry he was, do you really think the man would have eaten soap? It is quite apparent that this man has barely a penny to his name. It is a curious thing, but to one so destitute, soap can suddenly appear quite irresistibly ap appetizing. Oh, up until now, we've heard a lot of tidbits, a lot of dialogue where we referred to things that will happen when one is hungry. How oh, extraordinary. In truth, I have tried a little soap myself in the past. <laughs> what? You've eaten it, you mean? My dear fellow, it was some time ago now. My postulation was that it would cleanse my gut. Yeah, that's bad. And did it? As I writhed in agony on the floor and spilled the contents of my stomach, yes, I believe it did. The experience taught me a valuable lesson. Soap is quite poisonous. It has an unpleasant taste and leads to great discomfort. In summary, I cannot recommend it. Believe me, I wouldn't eat it, even if you did. And there's something that troubles me as well, actually. Oh, what's that? It's Mr. Natsume. Ah! I couldn't help noticing him shuddering and quivering out of the corner of my eye. I mean... He's twitching and quivering all the time, isn't he? Almost as if Mr. Shom's seduction touched the nerve somehow. No, 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 nonsense! Well, that lunch teeth episode didn't last. I think, judging by Mr. Natsuma's reaction, the great detective's seductions may need some gentle corrections in order to reach the actual truth. Yes, Mr. Shom's observations and deductions are sometimes a little too sharp. He has a tendency to hit the nail on the side of the head and drive it in at an obtuse angle. When he does that, it falls to us to straighten things out. Alright then, let's see what we can do. Yes, we must pick out the key words in Mr. Sholmes' quite brilliant deductions and discreetly exchange them for something that makes a little more sense. If we can do that, I'm sure we'll arrive at what Mr. Sholmes meant to say in the first place. I don't think... I don't think whatever we come up with is what Mr. Sholmes... Um, what, what he was meant to say. In that case, are you ready for the second performance of the day? Once again, my dear fellows, for your continued delight and wonder, let the curtain rise for Herlock Sholmes' Logic and Reasoning Spectacular, Act 1. Okay. God damn it, I cannot skip the dialogue. Poison is correct. The fork is not correct. Well, you can't deny that a fork implies the man was eating something, or about to eat something. Yes, that's true. If I were to decide to eat some soap, I should prefer to use a fork than to attempt it with chopsticks. And of course, only half of the bar of soap is left on the plate. But might there not be some other explanation? Something material that proves whether or not the man really ate the soap. Did the victim really eat the soap? Teacup? Ah. Uh, oh! What the heck is that? That's, that's his head! 
I think, and, and, and another piece of soap. It seems like... Oh, it's the other part of this soap. Holy crap, this soap is huge. Take that! Could it be that a man was about to eat it? Of course. The other piece of soap reveals the answer. It being the other half of the soap on the table. In short, the victim was not eating soap at all. But it's obvious, really, for no depths of hunger could drive any man to attempt to eat soap. <laughs> right. Even I, with my unquenchable thirst for practical knowledge, took only a single bite. But that begs the question of how the man was poisoned, because there's no sign of any food on the table. An excellent observation, Mr. Naruhodo, and one that furnishes us with the answer we seek. For London's foul soap is besmirched by foul poison. What? Yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the contents of this plate. No, we just established... Mr. Sholmes is still pushing the soap argument then. Perhaps he's suggesting the man licked the soap rather than ate it. If soap in London is that poisonous, I don't think I want to be washing my hands with it. But there are no signs of any food in this room at all. Of course, food isn't the only thing that passes people's lips, is it? Yeah, you could have drank something from the cup. Oh, what is that? Nothing. Yes, a western vessel for the serving of infusions of dried tea leaves. It's a teacup, Mr. Naruto, as well, you, you know. Stop putting on airs. And it's empty. Ah, so we've already established that the victim wasn't eating soap when he died. However, there's significant evidence to suggest that he was drinking tea. My thoughts exactly. Take that! Yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison. Uh, that tainted the teacup. Indeed, cups have been the vessel of choice for practicing poisoners over the centuries. And it would appear that this victim drank every last drop. There's no sign of food anywhere in the room. Which leads us to the immutable conclusion. The cause of death was clearly intoxication due to the ingestion of poison contained in this teacup. Okay, that was the easy part, and now the second part. Ah, and a wisdom vessel for infused hot drinks again. It's already featured heavily in our deductions so far. Yes, you can imagine that shortly before his death, Mr. Shamspear was having a drink of tea. There would be nothing remarkable about that, but what troubles me is Mr. Natsume's reaction when we when he heard Mr. Sholmes suggest it. There's more to this deduction than it seems. We must closely examine the scene of the crime again for some more clues. Do we have other- Oh! How did we even miss that? How did we even miss that? Take that! Did a man dine and die alone? There's other teacups such as the answer. Yes, there were two teacups in the room all along. Oh. In other words, this is a strong indication that at the victim's last supper, there was a guest present. 
At the very least, we can say now with certainty that somebody else was here in this room last night, taking tea with the victim. What are you talking about? Utterly unbelievably unjustly unreasonable! To draw a conclusion on such meager evidence would be foolish, however. Okay. In which case, what more can we deduce about this possible guest at the table? Well, allow me to lift a veil of doubt, my dear fellow. Do you mean to say you know who exactly was in this room at the time of the victim's death? Indeed. What reveals the answer, of course, is the broken lock. Well, that's not true anymore. I'm not sure I like where this deduction is going now. I'm afraid it's too late to go back to the Hakion days of eating too much soap. But the identity of the guest who was in here last night when the victim passed away is... is something I have a very bad feeling about. Well, you can try to ignore your feelings, but we cannot ignore the truth, Mr. Naruhodo. Whoa, that is deep. That is deep. No, I suppose not. Time to look around again. Oh my god, these are the books that Natsume borrowed, bought from the bookshop, isn't it? Empty bottle, candle. At first glance, it seems that the only things in this room are the makeshift stage and the costumes. I overlooked these three books initially. I wonder what they are, let's see, the titles read uh, The Picture of Monsieur Lecoq, Canterbury Yearnings, and Emile for Gaborio. Oh god, these are the exact titles of the book that Mr. Natsume bought. Wait, I'm sure I've heard those titles before. It could just be an incredible coincidence, but they're the exact same three books that Mr. Natsume purchased the other day. What? Yes, on the day of the unfortunate incident when Miss Green was stabbed, Soseki-san had just been to a bookshop and bought them, that's right. And now those three titles are here in the room of the victim. Yet Mr. Nasume claims never to have been here before. What, what does this mean, do you think? It means he lied. I, I really don't know what to make of it. Indeed, what reveals the answer is, of course, is the pile of familiar books. Oh, quite so, it's no more coincidence that these three titles are here in this room, it's the link to the truth. Oh! Mr. Natsume, you purchased, you, pur you, you purchased these books four days ago at a second-hand bookshop. It's a co 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 coincidence. In that case, you will be able to bring the same three titles from your own room, will you not? This very moment. No, never, non negotiable! If you can't bring your own copies here, it proves that these three books are in fact yours. <laughs> What was that? <laughs> Having purchased the books four days ago and returned to your lodgings, you were arrested the very next day. So you could conceivably have bought the books here, brought the books here on that evening, but you never mentioned that. In other words, you could only have brought these three books here to the victim's room. Last night, having returned to your lodgings after the trial concluded at the Old Bailey. In short, there's only one possible conclusion. The victim died here in his room last night as a result of poisoning, and that the same night that victim had a visitor. And that visitor?
was you, Mr. Sosuke Natsume. <laughs> that concludes the final act of Herlock Holmes's great deduction. Not again, not again, not again, not again! Well then, Mr. Natsume, it would appear you're gonna have to accompany me down to the yard again. But, 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 but wait! Now uh, hold your horses! Yes? Door, key, locked, entry, exit, entirely impossible! He's so flustered, he's being even stranger than normal. What, you think that's an alibi? You could have just made a copy. What? You live in the same building after all, you'd have had plenty of opportunity, I'm sure. But, 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 misery me! Sorry, sir, you'll get your chance of to give your side of the story later. The facts speak for themselves, Mr. Moustache. Ah, oh, you, you, you horrible Herlock Sholmes! He really has found himself an arch rival now, hasn't he? Come on now, no dilly dallying outside, there's a carriage waiting. Look who's student learn, Mr. Naruhodo, Esquire! I, I never imagined I'd be in this position again, but... You have to help me, please, please! I'm innocent! Alright, I understand. We'll come to your cell later and talk about it. <gasps> the cell? And one more thing! Oh, yes? My, my, my poor little kitty cat! Please give him his breakfast for me! Vagahai. And so... His evil curse still apparently unbroken, Sosuke-san found himself once again the prime suspect of a, in a case of murder. I mean, the first case wasn't exactly a murder, but I get what he means thanks to the incriminating deduction of the great detective. My dear fellow, that honor belongs to you. <laughs> yeah, I did it. I'm so sorry, Sosuke-san. Well, at least that means Inspector Gregson is no longer here. We can examine the crime scene in the more detail now. Yes, that's right. Ah, and of course... What? Have you forgotten what the Inspector mentioned before? It was the landlord, Mr. Garidab, who discovered Mr. Shamsphere? Ah, uh, Mr. John Garidab, yes. I expect we could find him in his sitting room on the top floor as usual. Right. We must remember to go and talk to him later, then. Okay, this means I couldn't have investigated anyway before. Okay, let's look at this. He has his own stage. He's an actor, but he's broke, apparently. And this is some sort of a makeshift stage, I think, isn't it? Where does the audience sit, though, for the nightly Shakespeare performances? Actors aspiring to the great stage must practice their art, Mr. Naruhodo, with or without an audience. In fact, on a related note, perhaps you should set up a mock bench for the defense in your office. What? Then you could practice your art every single day. I don't think this is how it works. I think about it. If you promise to don a beard and play the role of the judge. Well, if... If that would help you achieve your goal, I'll do anything. <laughs> this I have to see. This is the gas meter for the for the lamps, right? And here we have another disproportionately large machine. This looks like a meter of some kind. 
Ah, this is a gas meter, I think. It seems that in this district, residents pay for gas as they use it with coins. Ah, I see. Yes, now you've pointed it out. I can see that there's a slot just here that looks like it. Uh, that looks like it would take a coin. So you mean if you put a coin he in here? That's right. That would buy you about two hours of gas for lights and heating. So, if you were a poor person with no money, you'd have to sleep in the freezing cold? Yes, or if you were a scatterbrain with no change because you forgot to exchange your money at the bank. Thank goodness there's no meter in our office. Yeah, or you only pay, like, digitally, and you don't have actual coins in your pocket. That would also be a problem. Uh, unfortunately, in Germany nowadays, there are still some places you need coins for. This is a gas wall light, isn't it? It must be connected to a gas pipe in the wall. Gas lights, a gas stove. London really is a city of gas. But now that I think about it, Mr. and Mrs. Garudab had an open fire on the top floor, didn't they? Oh yes, you're right. I don't recall seeing a gas stove up there. Well, I much prefer a real fire anyway. It's so much cozier. But oh so dangerous. This is also a windowless apartment. As we've seen from the outside, the window is completely bricked up. A vestige of the former window tax that Britons had to pay. What well, strange things they used to tax in Great Britain. I mean, making people pay for the number of windows they had in a property is extraordinary. It's heartbreaking to think of the poor having to block up their windows just to avoid an unaffordable tax. Oh. What is it, Mr. Sato? If you look closely, a number of the bricks are loose. Oh. Oh yes, it looks as though an amateur has broken out a few of them just here. And and what are those inside? Soap? Was it Mr. Shamspear who did it? I wonder, being the lodger renting this room. Ah, look at this, Mr. Naruhodo. On the outside, there's a little ledge. And there's something on it. What outside? It's so cold outside, you can feel it through this gap. It did snow all last night, it would be cold. But more importantly, what is it on a ledge out there? What are those snow-covered lumps? It's more bars of soap. Soap? What are bars of soap doing lined up on a ledge outside the window? I, I have no idea, but a pair of them look rather charming like that. Still, that's very strange, isn't it? Bars of soap lined up outside the window. I think perhaps we should take one. There are two, after all. <laughs> Why? Oh dear, I I suppose we could. Oh, what's this? Look at, look here at this soap. Ah. Oh. Do you see in the middle there? There's a patch that's a different color. It's It's sort of transparent, but... Some sort of fancy design, I suppose, only in Great Britain. It looks like the Hinomaru flag of Japan, doesn't it? How wonderful. Hinomaru? You mean the, the national flag of Japan, which is like a one red circle? Hold on. Yes. So why is it called the Hinomaru, I wonder? Oh, Hinomaru means ball of the sun. Interesting. It's probably a very expensive brand. Expensive? Then what's it doing in this ramshackle old room? This is evidence now? What in heavens? 
Uh, do you want to close it up since it's so cold in here? A cheap bar of soap that was discovered just outside Mr. Shams Beer's window. One of the two. We we just took one, didn't we? What the heck? Huh? What is that? This part is a different color. It's an exquisite design, isn't it? Trust the British to turn a boring spa of soap into something special. Is this really just some kind of design? Or something else? I quite like it. It reminds me of the Hinomaru design of the Japanese flag. I expect this is rather expensive soap. That doesn't seem likely given who it belongs to. Yeah, he was broke after all, right? Wait, are there any other types of Japanese flags? Flag of Japan? I wonder, because Sasato keeps mentioning the Hinomaru type. Oops. Sorry about that. That's another outfit. Look at these extravagant bright costumes. Somehow they look out of place in this room with its grim, shady goings on. This one looks like a king's attire. A king? I've always dreamt of being a king. <laughs> I think you'd be more suited to a feudal lord. A daimyo or such like. And with a chonmage top knot? Every Japanese man wishes he had a chonmage. <laughs> you too, Ryunosuke? Oh, you'd look wonderful with one, and you already have the sword. Can you imagine what would happen if I walked around the streets of London with a chonmage and a sword? You already walk around the streets of London with a sword. All you need to do is shave your head. I guess. Like, half of it. Hmm. There's not much on these the, these shelves, is there? Just this wine glass and a bottle. And both of them are cracked. Yeah, it's not much use, are they? What's the matter? Oh, I was just reminded of the Reaper, that's all. Prosecutor Lord Van Zieks? Yes, he's so reckless with his wine glasses. I was thinking it's a waste and he should donate some to the needy. Exactly, it's such a waste and a poor wine too. You can suggest it next time we meet. <laughs> oh. Ah, no, we've looked at it already. Yes, that's all. Oh, the poor man, so young to die. Do you suppose it was a very painful death, being poisoned as he was? I don't know, all we can do now is hope that he'll be reborn to a better life. Yes, I suppose you're right, I wonder. Do you think that putting our hands together in a Japanese prayer will help a British soul? Sorry? I made sure I had a reference at a ready for just such an occasion as this, actually. I don't think they care for our Japanese prayers. This book is entitled The Beginner's Guide to Praying for the Departed, the British Way. Oh, the British Way. I just reread. I, I, I'll just reread it now. One moment. There's quite a spine on that book, isn't there? <laughs> okay. I guess she needs a moment to read everything. What's this? It looks like part of an envelope, I think. Yes, I think you may be right. Perhaps it was torn off when the letter was opened. Is that significant? Well, it's a little out of place, perhaps, when you look around the room. There's no sign of a letter or the rest of the envelope, in fact, is there? Ah, she's right. 
And yet, here we have the torn off end of an envelope. It just strikes me as unusual. I agree, we'd better take this just in case. <laughs> this is also an evidence. Okay. Shall we look at it right now? It's been torn, I guess. Whoever opened this envelope didn't bother with a letter opener or scissors, did they? Yes, whoever opened it was clearly someone with an unrefined temperament. And judging from the angle of the rip here, the person in question must have been right-handed. Oh! What? What? What, Mrs. Sato? I think perhaps someone's been reading too much of the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. You can never read too much of it, Mr. Naruto, never. Why would that be an indication of someone being right-handed? I don't get it. Sato-san, you need to separate fiction from fact. Do you remember when she said that... Um, what did she say about about uh, the knight armor in Lord Strongheart's office? <laughs> the, all knight armors are supposedly um, haunted by ghosts or something. That's what she said, right? Not quite sure. Ah, oh, one of the teacups that Mr. Shamspear and his guests drank from last night. But don't go drinking from them, Mr. Naruto. There's bitter poison inside. I'm not planning on drinking any, don't worry. Anyway, the cups are both empty. That's true, so one was Mr. Shamspear's and the other must be the cup that Mr. Natsume was drinking from. So Seki-san wasn't poisoned, of course. Perhaps we should take these so we can examine them in more detail later. We're just taking evidence from the crime scene. And, and why isn't the crime scene, like, secured by the police or something? I mean, that's really on you, Inspector um, Gregson. It looks like you're having a good snoop around, eh? Talking about the devil. Uh, Inspector Gregson, b back so soon? After I threw that little Japanese fella in the clink, I went and reported this to the investigation division. In five minutes' time, this place will be con cordoned off by the yard. Oh, I see. Well, we'd better be leaving then, with all the evidence. <laughs> Poor Mr. Natsume must be feeling very low being back in the cell again so soon. I'm sure. <gasps> whoa, whoa, we should probably go and... and... What's wrong, Mr. Naruhodo? Ah! <laughs> ah! Out, out, brief candle, life's but a walking shadow, a poor player. What is happening? That struts and frets this hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. Now, how soundeth the next part? It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Indeed, oh happy day! What? 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 Walking Dead? Wait, is he dead or not? I, I'm, I'm so confused. The, the, the fellow isn't dead at all. What was that nonsense? Uh, what was that nonsense he was saying, though? I think yes, it was from William Shakespeare's Macbeth. A soliloquy from Act 5, Scene 5. Shakespeare. 
So it was. That the victim, Mr. William Shakespeare, came back to life. If the man had indeed been poisoned, it transpired that it hadn't killed him. What? Oh, if he was poisoned, then the poison didn't kill him, yes. He was taken by emergency carriage to a nearby hospital for treatment. And Inspector Gregson evicted us from the scene of the crime, whatever that now was. The mailman? Whatever do you think will happen now? Good question. What a strange situation for Mr. Natsume. Arrested for murder, but then the victim comes back to life. I think perhaps the victim was never dead in the first place. It seems very likely that Mr. Shamspear did consume poison, as we did de deduced. But was it an accident, attempted suicide, or attempted murder? Until the truth can be established, I imagine the police will keep Mr. Natsume in custody. I suppose so. Let's hope it doesn't come to anything more than a night in the cells. Oh, what's this? What's that man doing over there? Wait, is that the bar of s soap? He looks like he's trying to see into Soseki-san's lodgings. Oh, wait. Wait, who is living in the ground on the ground floor is it Soseki or the other man Shamspear Is something wrong Mr. Naruhodo Um excuse me could we have a word oh. And he's gone He just ran off <laughs> I feel sure that I've seen that man somewhere before. Where was it? Hmm, I do too, but I don't remember. It was in the other game.